outside of the historical First United Methodist Church of Carbondale. This present structure is uh, made of stone. It was built in 1892. In 1901, there was a fire that leveled it, but being that it was a stone structure, they were able to rebuild it. And what you see here is from 1903. And okay, this is the cornerstone of the First United Methodist Church. As a congregation, we were founded in 1830. On the side here, the cornerstone says First Methodist Episcopal Church, AD 1892. Okay, I'm Mark Myers. I'm the organist and historian of Carbondale First United Methodist Church. My family has been a part of this church for over five generations since my great-grandparents joined in 1891. Uh, this is the inside of the sanctuary. Uh, this here is from 1903. Originally, this church was built in 1892. And in 1901, in November of that year, a uh, fire leveled the structure. But fortunately, from the original blueprints, they were able to rebuild it, something like it originally was. And in the spring of 1903, this church was rededicated. And as we look around the inside of the sanctuary, what you see here is what was put here in 1903. Okay, this view of the sanctuary is looking up towards the balcony. Uh, this church is built basically almost in the idea of a tabernacle with the design of a baseball diamond. Uh, the balcony stretches around from one end of the sanctuary, curves around to the other side. And as you look up in the balcony, we can see in the upper level three stained glass windows. These stained glass windows were of course installed in 1903 in the 1990s, they were fully restored. The first one is the resurrection window. The middle one is Jesus and his mother. And the one which, of course, is everybody's favorite window is that beautiful stained glass window of Jesus and the children. All the windows here were restored fully, including the smaller ones, about 25 years ago. And as we go around inside the, uh, the balcony, uh, with the combined seating of the lower level of the balcony, we have room for about 450 people in here. Uh, as you look at the woodwork, uh, it is solid oak with the original varnish on it. It has been uh, meticulously cleaned. We uh, have made sure that we try to keep the upkeep of the inside of the building here as great as possible. We just had the church repainted. And as you look up towards the ceiling, uh, unfortunately it doesn't light, but that dome, stained glass window dome, is from 1903 as well. Okay, we have a display here of historical items from this church dating back to the Civil War era. And I'll just point out a few particular items that we have here. Uh, this church was designated in a, a historic site. They list 1828 here. Some of the items on this table we have a membership book here from 1859 up to the 1860s. This book is from the Civil War. As I open it, this is original print, uh, cursive handwriting, recording birth births, baptisms, and marriages. Um, we have a picture here. This is the Methodist Church building that stood from 1849 to 1890. This is the church building that stood here during the Civil War era. An interesting note, is the bell of this church uh, was used as a town clock. Uh, there was a clock in there. The bell would also, when the soldiers would go off to war, the bell of this church would told the news to send the soldiers off. When the soldiers would be brought back after they were lost in battle, the bell would toll again. It's also the bell of the church here that when Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, uh, while they were holding conference, they told the news after the death of Lincoln, they announced Lincoln's death. Of particular interest is during the Civil War era, when the casualty list would be coming back from the battles through the telegraph, they would not only place the casualty lists on the courthouse doors. They posted them on the church doors 
And you can imagine after battles like Get Gettysburg and Antietam, Petersburg, uh, the horror that people would have, they'd be going to church and they'd find out on the front door. Okay, in 1901 when the church burned, they rebuilt the church. The bell that had been in the Civil War church building was put in the 1892 church. Unfortunately, it was destroyed in the 1901 fire. When they were going to rebuild the church for 1903, they took 145 pounds of the bell that had been destroyed and they recast it and they used 145 pounds to make souvenir bells to sell for a dollar each. This bell I hold here is one of the few remaining of those bells. Some of the, be the metal from that Civil War bell from the old church is in this bell that I hold. And here's the sound. Very nice. This wooden bell, this wooden bell here, is made from some of the wood that was in the Civil War church. And it's very unique to hold, realizing that the age of this wood, the, the wood here is a from 1849. These are just various items here. Here's a picture of when they laid the cornerstone of the church in 1892. This picture here is when the church was burned out. They took a picture of the burned out shell of the church. And basically, these are just old books, record books. Uh, these are early pictures of the church. There was the dome of the church. This is from the early days, probably the early 1900s right there. And uh, these are some of the items that we have on display. Okay, this is information about our present organ. This organ that we have in this church, our 1934 MP Moeller organ, is actually the third organ of this church. In 1892, when the church was built, we had an organ put in by the Hook and Hastings Organ Company, and that was here from 1893 to 1901. Unfortunately, we do not have pictures. These pictures here, this is the display I have done. These pictures are here. These are all the organists. This is a picture of the 1903 organ that was here till 1934. Uh, it was the second organ that we had, and that was put in by the Muller Organ Company. The present organ, presently now, the choir lost moved out more, there's over 1,300 pipes in the chamber, and here's where the console is. And this is basically pictures of the pipes inside. Uh, some of these pipes here are survived the fire. These pipes are from the 1893 organ that they were able to reuse. And, and these are some old hymnals. This is a gospel songbook from 1894. We have hymnals from 1905, 1932 the 30s and 40s, and the 1964 Methodist hymnal. And this is a bill of purchase, a sale from when the chimes were installed in 1934. And here is one of two remaining bulletins from when the organ was dedicated in 1934. Uh, these have been preserved in these papers to protect them. Okay, this is the 1934 MP Moeller organ. This was installed during the summer of 1934. At the height of the Depression, this congregation spent a thousand, I'm sorry, $10,000 on this organ. Replacement value is probably over half a million dollars today. In the pipe chamber behind the decor pipes, there is over 1,300 pipes. We have chimes, well, we have trumpets. I am now the 15th organist of this church since 1892. Okay. I'm going to uh, demonstrate the pipe organ. Uh, I'm going to share with you some tunes from the Civil War era. Um, I'm actually going to do a medley of four of them. I'm going to do Tending on the Old Campground, Tramp, 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 The Battle Cry of Freedom, and we're going to end with the Battle Hymn of the Republic. So I hope that you enjoy what you're about to hear. It's, again, beautiful 85-year-old instrument. And uh, I'm pleased to present this to you, and I hope that you enjoyed the music at this time.